What's going on guys? Sharpshaw here. Hope you guys are having a great day so far. So for today's video, we're going to be doing a killer tier list looking at the best iridescent add-ons. Quickly before we get into the tier list, I just want to go over a couple list conditions. This list is going to be from a survivor's point of view and how hard it is to play against each killer with that singular add-on. I'm not going to be looking at that add-on paired with another iridescent add-on. It's just going to be that add-on alone and nothing else. I'm also going to be looking at it as if an average killer was playing against me and knows how to decently use the add-ons and because there's a lot of add-ons there's 45 of them each tier isn't going to be in any specific order but the s tier is obviously the best tier and then d tier is the worst tier and i'm going to be doing this list in the order of the killer's release date so trapper will be first and then obviously trickster which is the brand new killer will be last so yeah without further ado let's get right into the video Oh my. So the Trapper's first iridescent add-on is the iridescent stone and I think this is a tier because every 30 seconds a bear trap opens that was previously closed and I think this is a super powerful tool for the Trapper because at the end of the trial basically every single trap is going to be open and if the survivors aren't careful they're going to be getting trapped all over the map and if the Trapper has some really good placements then all of those placements will open back up and it's going to be a really rough time for the survivors. His second iridescent add-on is the bloody coil and i think this one is b tier when a healthy survivor disarms someone from a trap they become injured usually when someone is trapped they disarm themselves or the trapper's close enough that they'll pick them up so this doesn't happen super super often so i think the iridescent stone is definitely better than the bloody coil the race first iridescent add-on i don't know how to say this but it's the coxcombed clapper <laughs> and i think this one is a tier basically it makes the wailing bell completely silent the one downside to the wraith is that he doesn't catch people by surprise because the bell is loud but when the bell is silent it makes it so that he actually catches people on surprise and he's super stealthy so he'll catch a lot of people on gens and stuff if they aren't paying attention his second iridescent add-on is the all-seeing spirit and i think this one is c tier it just makes it so that he can see the progression of each gen when he's cloaked by the intensity of their aura i feel like generally the killer will have a good sense of which gen is being worked on which gen is being close to being done so i don't think this is a super useful add-on to have hillbilly's first iridescent add-on is the apex muffler and this one is also a tier the chainsaw is silent when you're outside of his terror radius so you have no clue where he is on the map if you're really far away or if he's coming at you and by the time he is coming at you if you don't hear him it'll probably be too late so it's a really scary add-on to go up against his second iridescent add-on is the iridescent brick and i think this one is b tier you have the undetectable status effect after two seconds of starting your chainsaw sprint if you just hear the chainsaw coming closer and closer you'll know he's coming at you you don't need the heartbeat to know that but paired together you don't have any heartbeat or chainsaw sound to go after so it's really scary because it's basically a silent chainsaw sprint the nurse's first iridescent add-on is the torn bookmark and i think this one is d tier it does give you one extra blank but it makes it so that you can't blink through any solid objects so that's like the whole point of why the nurse is so good is because she can blink through objects so it kind of ruins the point of having an extra blink if you can't even blink through a wall so it's not that good her second iridescent add-on is the matchbox and i think this one is b tier it removes one blink but it makes the nurse's movement speed to 4.2 meters per second which is way faster than it normally would be instead of blinking everywhere she can just catch up to survivors just having her normal normal movement speed so it makes downing survivors a lot easier it's pretty scary to go up against someone that's so fast at their base movement speed and they can blink everywhere michael myers has by far the best and most fun iridescent add-ons to use his first one is the judith's tombstone and this one is s tier and it might be one of the better ones in the game he can kill healthy or injured survivors in evil within three so he can basically just grab a healthy survivor that's never been hooked before and just kill them them out of the game reaching evil within three is way harder but once he does he literally has the power to just end the game right on the spot his second iridescent add-on is the fragrant tuft of air which is also s tier and it might be one of the best iridescent add-ons in the entire game he has unlimited evil within three so he has unlimited one shot capability and he moves faster for the entire game yes it's harder to reach evil within three but once he gets there he has the entire game to one shot someone the hag's first 
first tier Destin add-on is the waterlogged shoe, which I think is D tier. It makes it so that she can't actually use her main power, which is teleporting to tripped phantasm traps. Instead, you just have an increased base movement speed, and whenever a survivor goes close to a phantasm trap, they just have the hindered side effect, they move slower. So it's supposed to make it so that she's better in chases, but she can't actually go to the traps, like say if she hooks someone and she goes somewhere else. Without the waterlogged shoe, she would have just been able to immediately teleport when someone's getting unhooked, but now she can't do that anymore. So this actually, I think, hurts her rather than improving her. Her second iridescent add-on, on the other hand, is actually insane, and it's the mint rag, and it's obviously S-tier. She can teleport to any phantasm trap on the map every 15 seconds and they don't have to be triggered for her to teleport to them and she can still teleport to the tripped phantasm trap so it makes it so that she can be literally anywhere on the map at all times because she can teleport to somewhere without it being tripped or she can just go regularly to the tripped phantasm traps doctors two iridescent add-ons are always played together because they're literally the perfect combo named iridescent queen and king but his first iridescent add-on is the iridescent queen which i think is c tier if you get stunned by the doctor's shock therapy or static blast you have a lingering static charm for the remainder of your madness until you discharge and people next to you you have the static charge they get stunned by it too and it increases their madness so it basically makes it so that everybody gets to madness three really quickly and they match because if one person gets it and they interact with someone else they'll get the static charge too his second iridescent add-on is the iridescent king which i think is b tier this makes every madness tier way worse and it makes madness 3 like ridiculously bad at madness 3 you have a permanent terror radius and a red stain behind you so it looks like you're always getting chased and illusionary pallets go in place of the broken pallets until you go up to them which really screws up your chase the huntress is the only killer with only one iridescent add-on and her one iridescent add-on is arguably the best iridescent add-on in the entire game and it's the iridescent head and it's obviously s tier it basically makes it so that it's a one-shot axe yes it reduces the hatch carrying by four but if you're going up against a really accurate huntress that just hits all of her axes it's one shot down so it's okay if she misses a couple here and there because she doesn't have to hit two she only has to hit one bubba's first iridescent add-on is the iridescent flesh and i think it's d tier when the bubba hits someone with his chainsaw it resets his charges so that they're brand new it's really scary if he hits one person and there's someone right next to that survivor so he can hit multiple people in one chainsaw go which is pretty scary but his tantrum only gets limited to a max of eight seconds so that's why it's not all the way up there in the higher tiers because he does have a limit on it his second iridescent add-on i don't know how to say this one either but it's the carburetor tuning guide and I think this one is B tier. It basically makes it so that his chainsaw dash is way better. It does reduce your movement speed while you're in it, but you have a longer duration of the chainsaw and his recharge rate is quicker. So you can do more dashes and the dashes are longer themselves. So it just makes him a much better killer. For such a powerful killer, Freddy's iridescent add-ons aren't that good. His first iridescent add-on is the red paintbrush. And I think this one is C tier. At the start of the match, every survivor starts in the dream world and failing a skill check doesn't make the survivors wake up anymore so it just helps them at the beginning of the game and then after that it's kind of useless because survivors usually don't try and wake up by failing a skill check and even if it does happen they try it like once or twice in a match his second iridescent add-on is the black box and it's also c tier the black box just royally screws over one survivor by keeping them in the dream world the entire match and they can't wake up from it and they're also the obsession. So if you're that survivor, it's a feels bad man moment. <laughs> For arguably the worst killer in the game, the pig also has really bad add-ons, but her first iridescent add-on rule set number two, just like I ranked her in my killer tier list video is in the D tier. It basically makes it so that you can't see the jigsaw boxes unless you have a reverse bear trap on your head. So I have no clue why this is an iridescent add-on. This would be a really good one if it was the other way around. You couldn't see the jigsaw boxes when you had the bear trap on you, but you don't even need to know where the jigsaw boxes are if you don't have a bear trap on your head. So this is a pretty useless add-on. Her second iridescent add-on is Amanda's letter. And I think this one is C tier. When she's crouched, she sees the 
the survivor's auras within 12 meters and it also reduces the amount of bear traps she has and jigsaw boxes if she's already crouched next to a survivor she's probably already has a good idea of where that survivor is so she doesn't really need to see exactly where that survivor is the clown's first iridescent add-on is a tattooed middle finger and this one is b tier any intoxicated or invigorated survivor their auras are revealed to the clown for six seconds if the clown intoxicates a lot of people he basically gets to see people all the time his next iridescent add-on is the redhead's pinky finger and it's even better than his other finger <laughs> because it's an s tier if someone is intoxicated and the clown directly hits that survivor with another bottle of after tonic they get into the exposed status effect in their one shot if it's a really accurate clown the survivors will be one shot the entire game the spirits first iridescent add-on is the mother daughter ring and i think this one is a tier in her phase walk her movement speed is really quick but her scratch marks are invisible while she's in there so she has to have really good hearing and really good game sense to know where the survivors are without the scratch marks if she's able to pull that off it's such a scary add-on to have on the spirit because the spirit will literally be able to catch up to you in like a second her second iridescent add-on are the father's glasses and i think these are b tier the survivor's blood trails are also visible in her phase walk blood trails are kind of small and pretty hard to notice unless the killer has like sloppy butcher so it's not super good but it's more information in the phase walk so it helps a little bit more the lesions first iridescent add-on is the iridescent button and i think this one is also b tier during their feral frenzy the terror radius is affected through the entire map and any pallet that they vault is immediately broken so it helps a lot with movement overall in the map and it scares the survivors because they're like oh my god is the killer right on me and it makes them distracted and paranoid and they start running the second iridescent add-on is the fuming mixtape and i think this one is c tier this one is really similar to the race iridescent add-on that's also in c tier because it basically does the same thing but instead of seeing the gens progression while they're cloaked they do it while they're in the feral frenzy for the same reason as before the killer will have a general idea of who's working on what gen and how far that progression is so it's not that useful the place first iridescent add-on is the iridescent seal and i think this one is b tier it makes the vile purge become corrupt purge every time a generator is completed but it makes it so that the corrupt purge time is reduced drastically and it decreases her movement speed while she's in corrupt purge so it makes her really powerful five times a game which is a lot of times to use corrupt purge but it makes it so that when she's in the corrupt purge it's not as good so it balances out a little bit her second iridescent add-on is the black incense and i think this one is s tier if the plague just does her basic thing and just throws up on everybody and everybody is throwing up she gets to see the survivor's auras for five seconds when they vomit survivors usually vomit pretty frequently so she gets to see where the survivors are pretty much at all times throughout the entire match so it's a super powerful add-on ghostface first here that's an add-on is ghostface caught on tape and i think this one is a tier it makes it so that it reduces the stock time when they're leaning from cover and it makes it like crazy quick but it crazily increases the stock time when they're not leaning so if it's a pretty decent ghost face and they crouch to stalk everywhere they go they're gonna mark people left and right the entire game and one shot people left and right so he'll basically be in his main power the entire game which is super strong his second iridescent add-on is the outdoor security camera and i think this one is c tier whenever a marked survivor is put in the dying state the auras of the people outside of his terror radius are revealed to him for four seconds it doesn't happen too too often in a game because it's really specific so it's not that useful the demogorgon's first iridescent add-on is the lepros lichen or lichen but i think this one is a tier the aura of injured survivors is revealed to the demo when he travels in the upside down it's like a reverse empathy for the killer and i think this is a really scary perk to have because they can literally travel to an injured survivor if they have good portal placements throughout the entire map so it's really good information his second iridescent add-on is the red moss and i think this one is c tier it just increases the duration of the undetectable status effect when he pops out of a portal it also increases the cooldown of traveling in the upside down so it's not that useful the oni's first iridescent add-on is the renjiro's bloody glove and i think this one is c tier every survivor can see blood orbs and if a survivor hits a blood orb they absorb that blood orb but the killer gets to see that survivor for two seconds 
and it stacks it's not that good because yes the killer gets to see the survivor but if the survivors in theory just consumed all the blood orbs it will make it so that the killer can never be in their power so it kind of hurts him in the long run his second iridescent add-on is the iridescent family crest and i think it's really bad and it's in d tier when he's in his blood fury if he misses a demon strike all the survivors within 12 meters of him get revealed he'll be chasing one person and the chance of another person being in that terror radius is really small and he doesn't just need to see that one person's aura so it's pretty much useless the death slinger's first iridescent add-on is the iridescent coin and i think this is a tier if the survivor gets hit from at least 15 meters away they suffer from the exposed status effect for the duration of when death slinger is reeling them in if the death slinger knows what they're doing and they're only trying to hit survivors from 15 meters out it'll make it so that they can one shot reel them in every single time his second iridescent add-on is the hellshire iron and i think this is d tier when someone is hit and he's reeling them in it just reveals the auras of the people inside the killer's terror radius for six seconds the chance of someone being in the survivor's terror radius when they get shot is kind of low and it doesn't give you that much information because you could usually spot them if they're in their terror radius anyways the pyramid head's first iridescent add-on is the obsidian goblet and i think it's pretty bad and i think it's d tier it just makes him have the undetectable status effect when he's standing in a rites of judgment trail and he doesn't get that many of that so he just gets undetectable status when he walks through a trail so it's pretty much useless if he's in a chase or something his second iridescent add-on is the iridescent seal of metatron and i think this is c tier it's basically a really bad version of bbq and chili without the blood points and it only works on people that are suffering from the tormented status effect and it only works when you send someone to a cage of autonomous so it's really specific and it doesn't happen too often blight's first iridescent add-on is the iridescent blight tag and i think this is a tier after he uses all of his rush tokens if he hits someone on the last hit it one shots the survivor and puts them in the dying state if the blight is really good and knows how to do his rushes he can put people in the dying state all the time his second iridescent add-on is compound 33 and i think this is c tier survivors within 60 meters of a slam suffer from the hindered status effect and it also makes it so that he can slam into pallets and breakable walls and actually break them in a slam so it isn't super super useful the twins first iridescent add-on is the silencing cloth and i think this is d tier after charlotte wakes up she has the undetectable status effect for 12 seconds people will already usually know where she is so it isn't really useful to have the undetectable status effect after she wakes up the twin second iridescent add-on is the iridescent pendant and i think this is b tier if the twin always stays really close to victor this is an insane add-on but usually victor is used to find people really far away from the twin and it makes it so that if a survivor crushes victor they suffer from the exposed status effect for 12 seconds so it's really useful if the twin is within 12 seconds of that survivor they could just one shot them all day but if the victor is really far away from the twin it's basically useless last but not least the trickster's iridescent add-ons are actually pretty decent and his first one is the iridescent postcard and i think this one is b tier it's pretty specific but it makes it so that when the survivor's laceration meter is one blade hit away from going to the next injure state it makes it so that they have the exposed status effect so the trickster can just go up and one shot them with his axe it isn't more than b tier because if they are one blade hit away from getting down it just takes one more night instead of walking all the way over to the survivor and one shot downing them it's really good if they're one blade hit away from getting injured rather than one shot away from getting down his second iridescent add-on is actually really good if you're really accurate with the blades which is pretty tough to do but it's the death throws compilation i think this is a tier it's like a multiplier if you keep hitting consecutive blades and it makes it so that the damage caused by the blades is increased based on how close you are to that survivor when you hit them and it starts at 50 percent and it goes all the way up to 200 percent if you don't miss you just need a couple knives to absolutely obliterate the survivors if you don't miss and you're super close to them so it's a pretty insane perk if you don't miss but it resets back to 50 if you miss so it's only really good if you're really accurate so yeah guys that was my iridescent add-on killer tier list let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are what you would change about it what you liked about it i love to hear your guys input per usual and as always let me know any other tier list ideas or tier lists you guys would want to see i definitely love to hear your guys feedback on that so yeah guys thank you guys so much for watching leave a like and sharp subscribe if you're new this has been sharp shot and i will see you guys in the next video